Hi everyone. Sorry for for being late. Actually, my my plan was for today to try to to be a little bit earlier, but uh, I didn't manage. So I was just packing my my things and preparing for for tomorrow. Uh, we will go straight to the subject, so we'll we'll start to work on the on the icon. And uh, of course, like usually, if you have some questions, you are more than welcome to to ask me. And uh, today we will I will do uh, it will be a normal class for two hours. Because in the last uh, five, but I, I will repeat this at the end also. So in the last five uh, Fridays, uh, I did always three hours. So to be able to recuperate the two Fridays that I will be, I will miss, I will be in US. So okay. And we will continue with the to paint the, the faces uh, with the first light. We just started uh, last Friday. Okay. Okay, it's good. So. Yeah, like I told you, I will show you on the tablet a little bit the steps that we we need to, to do today. So this is where we stop. We I just put the the, the first uh, lines, you know, and uh, then I need to start to to work more to cover the the old surface. So we are here at this level, and the next. Okay, the next level it would be so this is something between between the first light is finished on the face. So I will start with a brush with a blue brush to to cover mostly what is the most Im it's important to 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 know. Uh, first time when I want to to cover the uh, to start to cover the the first light, I go first between the lines because this is the place that I know for sure that needs to be really well covered. Uh, when we are at this level for the first light, it's true that it's not so much. Uh, it's not risky if you go a little bit uh, further than these lines or something like this but uh, it's a good training and this is it will help you to to understand and to get used with the with the process because uh, you'll need to repeat the same the same thing every for every layer every light on the face and when you reach at the end at the last light before putting the highlights the the white you need to to control very well a small surface you know not like we will have with the yellow because we will need to be around with the blending with a little bit of blending only around the the highlights so to to help you to understand better uh, the these are the highlights the young uh, the icon when when the icon is finished and the if you want we have first light the yellow then we have the second light that it's also covering also almost the surface 
in the third light we have it only here in these spots around around the highlights here and here but not not here so not so much here here also and that's why it's important already to practice and to be prepared in doing in doing this in controlling very well uh, the surface with the, the blending around around the highlights so we'll start to cover and first here and here around the the highlights everywhere like i did here exactly like it's in the in the photo and after this we will need to move forward so the icon should be should look like this with the first light everything should be covered all the surface and also with the blending so but i will explain you this also on the icon it's important to know that we have blending we have a transition color here this part here also here 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 on the nose on this part of the nose on the, on the right of the nose it's the line is really clean it's really straight is no no blending the blending is only in this side so i'm sure that the majority of you saw the the icon that i prepared for for the for the workshop for this year workshop you know with every every icon that i i do i'm becoming better and better in a, in a pedagogy from the pedagogical point of view so it's true that comparing with the photos step by step photos that we have for the virgin mary that was was done a few years ago uh, now I, I i learn even more so i am taking photos uh, uh, for every every step so even for the drawing this was just the beginning of the drawing a uh, really thin line and then i was reinforcing the drawing and adding a little bit of shadow it's a little bit difficult to stop every for every step every time to take photos because i'm used to work and to be concentrated on on doing the icon and sometimes when i was at the beginning i was forgetting to 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 stop and to take photos and i lost some intermediate uh, steps but for for this icon i try to to do as many photos possible so you see here i start with the highlights then like we are now at this step with our icon and after this i draw a little bit the zone the areas that we need to to stop with the yellow so this is the maximum that we are allowed to go with the yellow uh, and after that i was starting to cover like we will do now on the icon and also you see that here it's because i show you this icon because it's really it's bigger so it's much obvious to to see all and that's why i choose to do this icon at this size uh because it will help it will help the students to understand much better when you have a small icon like this when the nose is like this uh it's hard to see all these details you know all the transparency but when the icon is like this you know the the the, the nose is is this way it's much is much easier to see all the the details all the transitions so here you could notice that i put the highlights mostly in the middle here and then I have blending here, 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 and the, I have the area here that is draw to know where to stop. And then here it's a, another moment. So you could see on the nose what I was explaining you on the icon of Virgin Mary, that here is really sharp, the line is really clean, and the blending it's only on this side. So like in our in our icon of Virgin Mary, the here will be will be a strong uh, opaque color and the blending will be on this side on the side of the drawing so all the time on the byzantine icons if you have the drawing in one side then in that side you need to have a blending a certain blending for the for the color of the nose and on the other side that is brighter it's really sharp so the difference between the uh, proplasmus and the first light and the previous light the next lights 
it's really is really strong so yeah but anyway this is and then this is the last uh, step on this icon so on the on this light and we will need to reach the same level with with our icon also so this is with the blending and with everything okay so yeah maybe i could just uh, put all the photos like this you could see a little bit all the steps it will help you to understand much better on your work on on our icon even if it's a different different portrait but uh, is the the same they are the same principles so this is the first light that is finished then here it's another photo but with the same the colors are different but uh, the, but it's the same the same level this is already when i'm starting with the red so we'll we'll have the same situation and then i'm doing a certain blending uh, glossy uh, with the, with the red then the second light on the face starting the same way like we like we start with the first light always doing the 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 shape and the place of the highlights but this is they are not the highlights it's the second the second light on the face then i'm adding a sort of blending i try to cover the surface here i'm adding even even more here it's even even more this is the first light that is, is finished i guess yeah here it's finished the first light is finished uh, it's very important to it's true that the photos are sometimes depends of the light that I was having at that point but the photos in in the icon also we always could be tricked by the fact that the second light uh, when it's finished seems that is too too bright too bright and but on the moment when you start already to put the highlights on the third light this uh, this color that seems to you that was really bright goes back and actually it's uh, you will see it at the at the normal normal color so that's why it's really important not to get tricked about uh, because what the, the the mistake that could be done is the fact that you see this and you think that is really really bright really white and then you add a little bit more ochre or you know red to make it to make it darker because it seems that is too but it's it's okay it's okay like this you need to have a little bit of patience to and uh, like i was telling you before this uh, feeling of insecurity when you are working in one icon it's i find i found it, i find it that is really uh, you know uh it's it's really good and it's keeping you alive in a way so you are always active you you don't you never of course it's it's not the context but you never get bored by by but working in one icon in general but the fact that it's keeping you you know if you want it's like uh, in the theology and in the spiritual life is that uh, feeling that the holy fathers are 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 asking uh, uh to live our faith always to be awake i don't know the trans trans translation for the romanian words if to uh, but um it's really it's this is the the idea always to be awake and to be ready to fight against the the scene against the, so it's the same feeling for me i i associated this with the same feeling when i'm working on the icons when i'm i'm not really sure i'm always prepared to to fight always prepared to 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 discover new things and to so is is this this way uh even if you feel that it's brighter and with the uh, practice and with experience you'll get used with it and you'll realize that uh, that it's the color is the one that should be here it's true that you have you have a lot of help with the color proportions and uh, 
um, like this it's uh, it's much easier to compare prepare the color compare it with the with the the if you have the color chart that i i, I had it uh, in the layered icon or if you have the proportions uh, like this you could prepare and then you compare it and you see that it's working even if it seems to you that in the icon is too bright because then we move forward and you see already that color that was really bright here now because it's uh, uh, under a brighter color that is this is the the third light but it's not the final so it's not the these are not the the final lights uh, it's the third the third light so we have the yellow the first one we have this the second one that is everywhere a little bit pinkish color and then we have the third one that it's uh, on top of this and automatically the color that was before becomes a little bit darker and actually it's is the real the real tonality uh, so here the it's everywhere i did yeah no not yet the blending so i will do a, a little bit of blending on this light here so yeah, it has a little bit of, of blending here really really transparent really soft and already i started to put the dark accents on the face at this moment after i finished with all the all the lights so here it's also yeah so you could see in this photo and i could show you the original also what do you see it's already what it's underneath here uh, is the third light and with the blending and this is already the 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 final light the highlights so i have the the highlights here already uh, let me see so yeah so uh, this this was the moment when i had the the third light in the photos the difference not so so big but it's and here already i put it i put the so you see the two of them i put the highlights on top and yeah just to continue i put the dark accents everywhere uh, on the face i started to do the beard so yeah we don't have a beard so anyway just to show you the until the end But maybe, yeah, I don't know if we'll manage in this year of the project, but maybe next year, starting with October, we could, we could do, I would, I would love to do with you also this icon, so. Okay, so let me, I will show you right away, try to show you the, the original icon also, to take advantage on the fact that I, I have it so and I don't know what will happen when I will be in the US so you usually I yeah I sell my my icons that I use for for the workshop so I don't come back with them so it's really uh, it's really really big the let me put this paper so like this you will see the exactly so now it's this at least what i see on my camera are the the colors are cl as close as possible to the original ones so it's no i have no varnish on this icon so you could see these are my fingers so you could see how big everything it is this is was my idea from my my experience in the workshops i i noticed that on the moment when i ask a student to do one eye like this and when I draw one eye at this size, they they are able to see all the small details, you know, exactly like like this accent here on the eyes, like uh, this the fa the fact that this line should be this dark accent should be on the bottom of the uh, brown line of the eyes. The thickness of the eyes might be much easier to see to notice. And also it's helping a lot the fact that uh, uh, the size is bigger for the drawing it's much much easier to draw uh, this uh, size than to draw an eye like this you know, smaller and 
I saw all this, I was talking about this in my, my last year workshops. I saw these uh, errors also in, in really skilled iconographers uh, because what happens sometimes when you have reproductions, really raw reproductions, if the quality is not really good, you are not able to see this small detail. The fact that the dark accent is on the bottom of this, of this line and uh, this one and still you don't you need to see a little bit from the brown the reason it's it's simple it's just it's helping a lot the expression of the of the face to have it this way and i i make them some tests and it's changing that and also the fact that uh, gives some kind of volume the fact that this is brighter and this is darker you know so these are uh, and then gives a little bit of uh, of deep in in the in the in this uh, story so yeah, i don't know with the let me show you with the here i have the dark uh, the only the the white only here here is the third light they seem a little bit closer but they this different they are different colors always when we work in the icons even if there are differences between the colors, but uh, sometimes the difference is, is so is so small, it's not so big because it's something uh, we work with really, really, uh, you know, small differences, uh, and also, you no, know, like you have one eye, it's uh, one eye is smaller, and the other one is bigger. The difference needs to be really well balanced. So I don't make this eye like this, and the other one so large because it will look weird. So it it is the difference between them, but it's so soft and so small, and just to be able to see it, but not to be bothered by it. So it's the same thing with the chromatic. So we use different chromatic. For example, here. Uh, this part of the eye is much darker than this one and uh, from from a distance and when when the icon is varnished all the colors are settled down so you could see even much better and but it is a difference and it's important to 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 have it in our icon so yeah what do you see let me see if you see this pinkish yeah this pinkish color that is here around the highlight is the third light the color was not pink, but on the moment when I put it on top of the previous colors and uh, because the color was transparent, creates this transparency and this uh, interesting effect. Like you see here, a little bit pinkish. So, but it's, yeah, this is... Uh, so now, now you, you have the, you have the chance to see in, to be the first one we are seeing the, the original icon so yeah it's true that it's not in the camera and photos is not the same thing like in reality but uh, some of you who are coming to my workshop will be able to see it okay so this was my my gift for you today and uh, we use it to to be able to to help you to understand much better so the idea is that you see you need to be able to to see all the colors that we are using for for the face the the ochre the, the so the ochre is the first light then the the second light the third light the pinkish uh, tonality and then the highlights of course and for the for the ochre it's important to try to get this uh, green uh, transparency here uh, like here also and I'll show you how to do that on, on our icon okay. and now let's start to work on on, on our icon So like I told you, I will, uh, just to clean the, the icon, I will go with the brush, with the blue brush first between between the, the lights 
and then I will start to, to fill the, the places and to add more and more uh, color. So we'll use we are using the same color. It's the first the first light uh, that I prepared last time. Uh, yeah, so Emmy, it's it's online and she has questions, but it's really good. So it's a really good question, and I know that it's some kind of a cliche, but uh, for me, when I started to teach, it was obvious. But uh, then you know, like everyone wants to make publicity and stuff like this, and you'll hear everywhere uh, uh, in everything, I guess. You know that about traditional way traditional byzantine iconography and all this stuff and sometimes i saw i was surprised to see that people are are pretending to do a traditional uh you know painting uh, icon and the was traditional from a renaissance point of view so it was not traditional from the byzantine point of view but anyway, yeah, if they 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 count on the thing that uh, not everyone knows about it and is not really well known the traditional Byzantine way. And of course, when you are talking with students, they are there to to learn and they they don't have the the knowledge necessary. And they they came to a workshop to learn about about Byzantine iconography. The idea is what bothers me, and I will I will I will get to the to the to the answer. What bothers me is to see that people are pretending to be a traditional way when they are actually painting in the in the way of Renaissance. But it's true that uh, you could get a good result and to do a painting, not to be like a realistical painting, but to look more or less like a Byzantine uh, icon. But if you follow the steps that you, you used to do in whale painting or in a Renaissance uh, painting, then that is not working in the traditional Byzantine way. So uh, when I was when I study when I was studying Byzantine iconography, for me it was obvious. I knew very well because we study art in general. We study oil painting, acrylic, and portraits, and uh, we study Renaissance. But when we reach the point in the the last years from the from the university that we need to now we are moving forward so we are painting icons it was obvious from for from uh, for our teachers and for us that this is a different technique and we are doing things differently because what we want to obtain is different different results we don't want a realistic icon we want a byzantine icon and we follow the world uh, the world uh, uh, byzantine style of doing icons and this is mostly the in the book of iconographers. The uh, it's called. We have it translated in Romania by by a good friend of mine, uh, uh, and uh, it was translated from Greek. It's called the Erminia of the of Dionysia from from Furna, and uh, he was the how we we end up with this book in in. In, in the history is that the uh, painters were writing down all the, the recipe and the way that they were painting icons uh, during you know all the years of of, uh, of Byzantine iconography I don't remember exactly the year but this book is based mostly on the writings of uh, of Pancelinos so the recipe that you will find in that book uh, uh, the majority of them are by Pancelinos and he is explaining, you know, in even Dionysia de Furna is explaining in the book, this is how Pancelino was preparing the first light for the face. This is how Pancelino was preparing the, the colors to do the second light of the face. So, and... Uh, so this is this was actually the, we learn a lot and all the the Greek modern uh, iconography is based on Pancelinos and uh, all the period of uh, you know Thessaloniki school even if they develop and they they went to different different uh, uh, 
uh, you know, directions like Serbian iconography that I, I, if you want, I love more than Pancelinos and icons that, uh, uh, let me show you some because... I asked my friend if he he's I don't know maybe it is the book is translated also in in English I don't I don't know for sure but I was trying at some point to 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 find it on the internet but uh, I didn't I didn't manage uh, let me see one moment so yeah anyway this this for example this icon it's uh, they said that was was painted by Pancelino. So we have three icons of him that we we know. This one, one with Saint uh, George, and another one with uh, Saint Demetrius. Uh, it's the style and everything. It's unbelievable. Then, uh, so this is icon. The icons look a little bit different, but it's the same. They are the same uh, steps, the same technique, the same principles. Just that if you want. When you paint one icon, you have you need to have a different approach, like you saw in my in the icon that I did. Because what what I did with the Saint uh, Saint the Prophet uh, Elia is the fact that I I took one uh, reproduction, one uh, one icon of Pancelinos, one sorry one fresco of Pancelinos, with uh, with that. Uh, uh, subject and then I I transform it in an icon. So you need the the frescoes are on the wall and the, the icons you put it in front really close to the viewer to the eyes. So every anyway the the idea is that traditional way for for the economy then you have the face that is covered with the uh, proplasma then you do again the drawing because you have the drawing incised. Uh, after this, you know, you you put uh, you do the eyes. You put this uh, this uh, part of the hair a little bit of uh, reinforcing. You know, like I show in the photo, reinforcing the drawing. Uh, one more, just to put it closer. Then was the first light with the blending. Then is the second. It's a little bit much much brighter. And at the end, you know, he put it everything in one photo, but it, and then was the was the red, he put it the red, and he put it the highlights and the third light, and also the, the lights on the hair. Here he put it also the first light on the hair. But it's up to everyone, you know, also on the moment if you choose to put the red uh, um, after this moment, or you need to put it uh, at the end, but always before putting the highlights, of course. Uh, it's up to you and uh, this is you know this is the, the if you want is the basic of the traditional way of doing icons uh, then it's up to everyone you know also in the chromatic and of course the chromatic it's a little bit uh, different but always what is the when we talk about the uh, principles in and the ta traditional technique a traditional way of painting icons for me and for the for the majority of iconographers, it's really really obvious, especially for for iconographers from Montatos, from let's say, the the um, the traditional iconographers, the ones who are following the the traditional way and uh, are not so much crazy about uh, you know inventing new new techniques. I'm crazy about discovering new techniques and about knowing Pancelinos more and more deep about knowing knowing the how the Serbian iconography was was developing and about the Thessaloniki school that they took everything from Pancelinos and they develop and they 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 improve it if you want so when i talk about the the principle this is this is it you know these are not doing a bright color then adding shadows and then i don't know adding red and or putting a, a bright color everywhere adding shadows and after that moment you do the drawing or i don't know it's i didn't bother to 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 pay so much attention but i know that exists and there are some some painters who are doing things a little bit differently mostly it's they are influenced so much about the, the, the modern art, the, not the modern art, they do realistical art and they apply the same technique in doing icons. And of course the result could be pleased, could be could be okay, but it's not I think what this the 
the technique of doing Byzantine traditional uh, icons, it uh, has a theology inside. So just this doesn't happen. And we talk about this several times and, uh, you know, like this is like, like the beginning of the earth and the fact that the earth was undefined and nothing was, uh, was like a, so like a all surface. And then uh, it says that uh, the incision in a way is like the boundaries that God put it between the, the, the earth and the water and the, the drawing also reinforcing the, these boundaries. And then, of course, when we talk about adding high uh, lights in on the face, it's like also like the earth was flat and it's coming to to have mountains, to have different, different uh, uh, form of relief and uh, uh, nature. So, and in from one point of view, because we are shaping and we are giving a show of a shape, this was a flat surface, but this come a surface with a, with a shape, so with the volume and then we are making it even brighter. This is the first uh, explanation and the second one is the fact that everything in, in the life of, of God, in, in the spiritual life, comes from the darkness to the light. So we are called to come from the darkness, the darkness of our sins and the darkness of the fact that we, because of the, the first, uh, because of Adam and Eve, we we our our nature it's inclined to 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 fall to to the sin and we are called from that from you know from the death to the resurrection so this is always the message and remember that i i, I told you about this uh, several times the fact that everywhere in the icons for the garments for the face for everything the message it's it's one always coming from the darkness to the light so always like this and here we talk we don't talk about the light that is coming from the exterior light it's coming to the light of the holy spirit not a light uh, uh, artificial or uh, a light from so always the light of the holy spirit uh, yeah so i hope that this was was pleasing your 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 question so now you you know and but it's a really really good book and uh, you know it's starting from from the first, let me see if I found something. Yeah, but they are, you know, they are everywhere. It says uh, like this, you know, how to 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 do the to prepare the colors. It's true that the names and everything were for for some really old traditional uh, recipes. Uh, but what is the most important thing it's important to to for us was important to to understand the the, the techniques and the traditional way of uh, how the old painters were were doing so it says here the fact that uh, the the monk Dionysius from from Furna uh, he he studied uh, the Byzantine painting in Montatos, where he, he actually he learned how to paint icons, and he collected uh, uh, okay. So he says here, this is a a, a quote from from Dionysius from Furma, and says Furna says that. Uh, with a lot of uh, struggle and uh, working really, really hard. And for years, uh, even when I was a child, I was struggling to follow uh, after my, my powers, to follow to Manuel Pancelinos, uh, uh, who in Thessalon Thessaloniki was uh, brighter like a, like a light, teaching uh, about the holy icons. Uh, and uh, teach and showing uh, the 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 beautiful churches from Montatos that he he painted. So between the all, the, but anyway, I won't, I won't translate all the book. But between all the all the the old tradition, uh, the renowned uh, painter Pancelinos was uh, was the most. Uh, uh, appreciated in uh, Dionysius' eyes, uh, uh, 
uh, like in, in everyone's eyes. Uh, so yeah, he was following himself, Pancelinus was following the, the traditional Byzantine way and uh, um, after, you know, following, having uh, prototypes and copying all the all the old uh, uh, drawings and uh, they were for them was a little bit much difficult to to learn in those days so it was not like we have now we don't need to go to churches or to museums to copy the, the icons we could have access uh, directly on the internet and to have the icon that we, we want to have an icon of Pancelinos like here we don't need to travel to Vatopedi to Montatus we have it here it's true that it's not the same thing but it's it's something so it's important. So we need to thank God uh, always for for these opportunities that He is giving us in 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 this uh, this era. So. And still we <laughs> we have the traditional way. We have inspiration. Pancelino was following the old. Uh, uh, iconographers, and we on the other side we have problems with modernity and we want to be to do new things and uh, without understanding because th this is my main problem if you want without understanding the old ones we want to to do new things so I think this is the maybe this uh, thing comes came from the incapacity of understanding and that's why okay you said just to put it away and to try to do things on our way yeah okay so now we are starting like i told you we will use the brush number three for this and i will go just between the i'm sorry for not keeping my promise because i said that we won't have an introduction but uh, and we will go straight away to to work but i think it's i'm, I'm sure that will be useful for everyone and I'm happy to to share with you this. So I don't want to to say that you know I'm I'm really strict about this and the the idea that you know uh, everything that is done otherwise is not correct or it's not mine to judge first of all. But I think on the moment when I'm I'm when I started to teach I I feel responsible for 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 teaching the the traditional the good way how to do icons. And then it's up to everyone, you know, we are always free to, to have our dialogue with God and to, to receive guidance and to try to, you know, to find our path. But I think always, I, this is how I'm, I'm, I'm used to, to be, always when I have questions, I'm going back to the Holy Fathers, to the teaching of the church and uh, to the holy scripture and i'm sure that i will receive more wisely answers than uh, i could receive otherwise or other way or yeah and so it's the same thing with with the icons and it's not i refuse to believe in the idea that it's what we are doing even if we are following a prototype is not copying icon it's a act of creation and is really really alive and is full of of holy spirit and we are putting ourselves there our our souls and our uh, experience in that icon and we are not forced to do exactly the same way like it's in that icon so we have the freedom to choose elements you remember like i told you i explained in this icon to choose elements from different different icons and uh, to try to uh, to find your own way but always you need to be connected with the tradition so even if you change something if you put a different garment try to see if you have that one in the tradition and like this you are sure that you are going in the right direction and it's a sign of being humble in a way because you don't put yourself in front saying that okay I want to do the garment this way and uh, Okay, so now mostly is the 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 thick color, you know, original color. 
I'm going mostly in the between the lines. You see, always uh, let me put it a little bit sorry closer. Uh, I'm always leaving a space, certain space here, and here also. This is a principle. It's a reflex for me now, but it's really important to to pay attention. Because what happens? I don't want to go with the opaque color over here because here I will need to have a certain a certain diluted color or certain blending. So that's why I stopped here. Maybe I will see after I, I cover more, I will see that I need to go a little bit more, but I prefer to stay in the safe zone. So to do it this way and then when it's necessary, I will add more or if it's not necessary to add more opaque color, here I will add only only diluted color that the one that will will be for for the transition that we'll need to have. So remember that said that on this side I I have a blending here I don't have it so it's no problem. You see I went over this line here also I don't have I could I could go because it's no it's no blending, but I always like I told you always start. When I see two lines like this one, uh, let me see, I will show you here because it's much easier. When I see two lines like this, I go in the middle, but I never, I never start from here. I start in the middle as much as possible. I let it dry, I move forward the same. Even if, let's say, I see that here I need to have it more, I let it be this way and then when I'm sure I could go with the diluted color or with the opaque one. So I try to get a certain opacity. But doing this several times you'll get used to it and you'll avoid problems, you'll avoid to have. So here's the same. between and on top doesn't matter anyway you here we need have the empty space so I stop here here I need to go over here I let it dry I move forward to a different different spot uh, if you want we could do this so this will, will help you even more Okay, like I did on the icon of uh, uh, the prophet. Okay, with a brush, so I will dilute it. I will dilute a little bit the color, at least for the first first light. So I will put the original color. I put a little bit more egg. I will take this brush for the thin one. And I will draw the the areas where I need to stop with with my my icon. Let me see if I have it in the photo. I have I don't remember. Maybe I have it on the step by step photos with Virgin Mary. Just to check. Yeah. So not necessary. I don't have it. Yeah. I was you know. Every year when I was teaching, I, I learned because being in contact with the students and seeing the problems that they were facing, I learned and I, with the help of God, I discovered new methods of, of, uh, of teaching and trying to help them to understand much, much better uh, the process. And this is one of them. So at this moment, when I did the Virgin Mary icon, I, I didn't knew about this technique. So now I will draw what is happening is so we have let me show you one moment okay we have this plastic here so this will, will be much easier to understand okay 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 This is a little bit too thick, but okay, we'll try with this one. Um, so now we, like I told you, we have this is 
the first light with the blending that is finished but now we need to draw a line a little bit more inside here it's okay we stopped already we don't have a problem here here so this is the area okay if you want this way this is the area that we need to cover with the color could be opaque color you know the the first light so i give you the example on this area here of, of course is the same always a little bit inside of the of this here it's okay you could go inside of the shape that we have so we have this shape here so if you want this is our place with the yellow the yellow color when you do the the first light and you want to have the opaque surface here it's okay so we don't have the blending but where on the spaces that we have the blending go a little bit back so inside here we have the blending uh, here let me see yes we have a certain blending here just go this so this is the surface that you need to cover with the opaque opaque color and then around this surface you could do the blending here here we don't have a blending that's why I went on till here I didn't uh, stop here and here you have blending so all this surface this will be the blending the transition color the is the same uh, yellow but it's just that it's diluted it's the same diluted and more transparent and then you will do the blending and it's the same thing everywhere you know everywhere is, so we do the same thing for all the parts of the face now I will try to draw with a color that is more transparent so I choose to do it, dilute the color because if I do a mistake if I go too far then I, I could easily cover with the sun here the idea is that we need to try to avoid as much as possible to cover the yellow if we go too far with the yellow let's say I went too far here and I need to cover with the sun here we need to try to avoid this ac those accidents because it doesn't look right. The transparency, it won't be the same, you know, it will be hard to get the same uh, transparency because of the fact that it's not only the, the base, the, the proplasmos uh, here, it's a mixture between proplasmos and the yellow. So the tonality of the proplasmos will be, will be changed. So now I'll try to, to draw. This needs to be transparent, you know, just to be as much as necessary to be able to see it, but not really strong, because if you decide that here to, to have it transparent, then it's good to... For the nose also, it's a little bit more difficult for the small.
Okay, so these are the areas. Uh, let me see. If... Okay, so like this, you'll be able to to see it. So the idea is to follow the same shape, just to to make it thick, thicker, uh, thinner. Sorry, or smaller than the that one. And now I'm still going with the brush with the thick color. Continue with this to reinforce mostly between the the lines, but. What I know now it's um, I'm I know that I need to be in the safe zone so I'm not stressed about the fact that I will cover too much. So having this uh, already drawn, this line will help me to to know where to where to stop. So here I know that I could go is no problem. For the for the first uh, brush strokes, it's important not to insist too much with the color because it needs to to dry first, and just put it move in different places. So move from a place to another. Yeah, for the years is is the same shape. I forgot to do the to draw the the boundaries the. So we did here for the neck. Let's do on Christ uh, face also. Usually when I work, that's why I told you that I discovered this technique from from the pedagogical point of view to help you to 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 understand, to help the student to understand easier. But when I paint, I don't do this boundary, so I just do it directly, and uh, I'm working with the blending in, in the same time. But I realize that it's a little bit more more difficult because you need to 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 know where to stop. So. Here, what I know, for example, for the hand, I know very sure that all this surface, all this line, it needs to be covered and to be opaque. So I could go really freely. And I forgot to do the, see, it's, a, it's actually helping a lot. It's helping a lot because you are more relaxed so you don't you you are not stressed about the fact that you will put too much you'll go too far with the color so having this line drawn already
Okay, so this way, let's see if it's dry. So normally we said we, okay, let's just do here what is dry already for the face. I, I said that this is the area that I need to cover. So now, even if I go with this brush, or I take the big brush, I just, you know, it's like, like a coloring book. Cover this surface. Until it became matte surface, but the same way, let it dry and then you come back. Uh, you now we have we have enough surface here, so we could use a bigger brush to cover. And now I'm using the original color, not the diluted. Yeah, so it's really important when you want to cover a certain surface to obtain an opaque surface. Always you go with the the original color. You see, it's. If I'm insisting, I'm pulling up, I'm pulling up the, the color, so I let it dry and I move for a different space. So at the beginning, of course, it's transparent. Even if you add several layers, you need to let it dry. When the 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 first light is, is dry, it's working much much easier. It's absorbing better the the color. So. So if you see that you are pulling up the color, it's mostly is because you are impatient to 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 move to finish. You want to finish one spot and you went several times. So remember, like I told you, every time do maximum two, three brush strokes in one spot and then move forward until it will dry. And then you could come back. So we need to apply the technique of three brush strokes maximum for this. The reason is that the pro proplasmos is really dry and now and this color is really wet. So until it creates some kind of connection between them and the the proplasmus and the, the gesso is absorbing the humidity from this takes a little bit of time but then it will work much much easier So here I do it like this, really thin. This part it's uh, it's uh, thicker and became thinner, so I follow this.
uh, is starting to get to get some volume. Here, because the, the space is small, I changed the, the brush, so I took the number three. Always remember, say when you want to cover a surface, always a flat brush, so always use a flat brush. I make the connections between the between the fingers between these uh, bright spots on the fingers it was funny because I recently saw on the TV that uh, TV show with uh, I guess it's called Bob Ross or something that painter and uh, it was funny because he was keep repeating he had a verbal tick or something keep repeating this is how you how you like it is how you like it, how you decide but in the in the iconography unfortunately i can't even if it was really really interesting i can't tell you the same thing it's how you decide because So, yeah. so I try with small steps here and there I try to get uh, opaque surface you know as much as possible I will just put the thing this is useful for you to see a little bit from closer so you see it's transparency but for the nose for example already starting to to have a certain opacity opacity on this side of course on the right you know, like i told you So the nose is, is almost finished, it's just that the next step is to add a certain blending, a tra transparency here. But the, the opaque surface is, is finished already. Just to have an idea how it should, should look at this point. But there are sometimes there are here and there are some spots where you need to be more opaque.
Uh, yes, Yahoo. So Amy is asking uh, if I will talk about how we can achieve the expression of the face, especially the Virgin. My Virgin seems to sad, and I'm not sure why. Uh, the yeah, with the expressity is most most of the time are are the eyes. If the eyes are not done correctly, the uh, you could have a. But it's yeah, I don't know. Uh, if you want the eyes from the face and the portraits were my biggest, they were my biggest trab uh, struggle in all the years. So now i could easily manage to to get a good a good portrait a decent portrait but i remember even like i don't know 10 or even less years ago i was keep correcting and always fixing and always it was really hard to get the right expression from the but it's true that i was looking for the right expression and i i like to believe that uh, that my icons they have something particular and in from this point of view so for me it's really important i don't i let i let myself be be carried by the you know the inspiration the our inspiration is the holy holy spirit and uh, but i try to 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 be as much as possible close to the to the traditional uh, icons that I I love some of them I love more than than others and uh, um, if I'm not pleased with the with the expression I'm not you know giving up so I try to uh, to give you the exact recipe it's a little bit difficult I could of course to give a critique and looking at one icon that is not right to to tell you what you should correct and what should uh, but uh, uh, yeah I will try to you know it's an interesting question I will try to to figure out some ways in but most of the time you know if you go with the eyes are a little bit the 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 line the upper line of the eyes is too too low of course that the expression is really it could be said if the mouth is too the corner of the mouth is too down of course again the expression is i will yeah i think it will be it will, it's an interesting subject and i will write it down and i will try to prepare myself a little bit for it and with uh, some images so to make a little bit i think this is the best way that will help you understand to make a little bit of comparison between between the the different icons because even if in the old traditional icons you could see some some different expressivities and uh, expression on the faces so. but like everything it's really important to to notice to see that it's a problem and to struggle as much as possible to try to fix it so the best way is by comparison but putting your icons next to the prototype that you follow and paying attention to those details like i told you you know uh, the eyes could be the reason most of the time and the mouth also so try to look at those details in comparing your icon with the prototype and to see what is not working what you did different so this is in our case also but in general when you follow an icon and that's why get me to the uh, and uh, get me and give uh, get me to to give you a good argument uh, argument uh, for following the prototypes because like this you have something to compare so if you see something wrong you don't leave it this way you you try to to compare it with the prototype and to try to get it fixed you know but it's only possible on the moment when you are following a prototype not when you are following only your your inspiration or you the way that you think yeah of course the the shape under the eye could could be could affect the the expression also so like i told you the eyes, the eyebrows, of course, 
most of the time if the eyebrows are too close to the one to another it gets a really angry expression um, yeah so but like i told you i will i will uh, it's a i will i will think about it i will try to come with some uh, you know try to come with some examples from the both categories and uh, like this i'm sure that i will will help you to to understand better So always go with the dry brush, you know, always with the dry brush, not even if you want to create an opaque surface, go with several layers with the dry brush and uh, try to cover that surface. Here pay attention to keep it for the fingers, to keep it so we know that in this side we have the, the light in our finger and here is the shadow like I explained you for the nose where we have the we have the drawing here so this means this means that this part is a little bit uh, uh, darker and is brighter on the other side so here we could go until uh, the end sometimes it's better to leave a little bit really really thin space really thin space to do a sort of, of blending but uh, of course it's much uh, thicker here this side and this side it's uh, still you know you could still see, see the the, the sun here because this space i'm saving for for the blending for the transparency
this uh, step with the first light it's is the most important one if you want and it is the one that demands a lot of uh, a lot of effort in a way because it is the first light that defines the 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 volume and uh, settle down the volume on on the face and it's really important to to put it in the the right uh, spot after that with the next uh, lights, we'll work on the surface that we created with the first light, so it will be much easier. And what is really, really important is the fact that we need to have this first light, remember, like in the photos, at the end, when everything is finished, to be really well covered, you know, really opaque, not on the surface that it's opaque, of course. So. At the end should look like this, but what do you see here, this this space here needs to be really opaque and not transparent. The transparency is only here, not here on this area. So this is it's really this this first light is sustains the the, the 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 next lights that we have on the face, and if this is transparent. Uh, the other ones will be also transparent and will be darker. So if we put, for example, uh, here, it's really, let's say, it's really opaque, really matte color. If I put a brighter color, the, the next light here, and uh, I will put the same intensity of the, the next light here, this one here will be darker and this one will be brighter. And if you do it this way, if it's on this, it's okay. If it's on the highlights, it's okay. But if it's if here you have transparency and here it's it's is uh, is really opaque, then it's not right because this is the spot. So you need to to pay attention, especially under on these spots where we will have the highlights, to be really well covered. This is is for all for the first light, for the second light. Uh, they need to be really well covered here and then a certain blending here and here it's okay. I when you paint when you are at this level with with one icon I advise you let's say at this moment to let it settle down to dry a little bit at least for for one hour and then to continue and you'll see that is working much much better so This at the corner of the mouth always you will see on the icons of Virgin Mary and of Christ of course in the, in this semi profile that it's a little bit more transparent so it's a little at least on on this this part 
it it will be more uh, it will be a little bit darker and uh, the in the yellow it will be transparency so a little bit of blending I uh, already found uh, in my mind some some icons that will help you uh, with the expressivity. Uh, now it, it, I, I have this uh, came this idea at me that maybe it could be interested at some point to to send me but on the private message uh, not on the on the chat group uh, to send me some photos of your your icons that you work on the class even if you are not if you have this or you don't have this option with the critique. I, I'm not. I'm not again. I will. Not, I'm not giving a critique uh, directly to you, but I will love to see your your works, and uh, this will help me a little bit to know uh, in what direction to go with my with my teaching. So I will give you, if you want, a general critique, looking at all the icons and to see what is working and what is not working. And uh, then to try to 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 point out those uh, those problems. So I hope that the feedback will be better than my my questions regarding the packages that everyone chose because I didn't receive so many answers but uh, I will I will ask everyone at some point when I will find a little bit more free time
It's I just want to point out that it's it's not a general critique, it's not the same, you know, it's just for pedagogical reason and to uh, help you to guide you much better. But it's not it's a in a minimalist way of a critique. It's not the same. So for those who have a critique uh, package, they know that uh, it's a different different thing. So now I could start already to do a little bit of, of blending. Uh, here we have the colors. This is the, the color I diluted, but it's a little bit dry, so I'll add more egg. Here even more transparent the same color now remember that I told you about the two diluted colors that we use okay So always dry dry brush like this. First here the, the the surface is covered but I go first on the opaque surface to control to learn to see what is the, the quantity of color that I have on the brush and then really soft I'll go next to it and to try to make a blending the same thing really really soft try not to take off the the color with the blending it's a little bit tricky because if it's, it's transparent you you are not able to see it only until it's dry. You could see it, but uh, it's more obvious when the color is dry. Now I go also with the, the second diluted color. With this one I go a little bit more further.
So the nose, the nose is it's almost almost finished. You can see a little bit uh, the blending. So here I switched to the brush 6 or 5, a bigger brush because I have plenty of space and it's true that in situation like this brushes that are a little bit bigger are, are much better to do the, the blending. So you see this surface here, you see the blending, uh, I can't point it, but you see it here is the blending is drying already. My idea is to try to make it as smooth as possible, you know, this, this surface. But remember that you need to pay attention to see if it's dry enough. I will let you let it dry first and then I will come back. Could work in a different surface now.
So when we have the blending, you know, it's um, still I need to add a little bit more, but it's, it's really advanced. Uh, we need to, we see also the transparency on the opaque surface, so we could add with the original color, we could reinforce a little bit, but mostly inside, you know, not outside, because I want to keep this, this blending. So we, we will stop for for today, we will have two hours um, and we will see each other in two weeks, so the two Fridays I will be, I will miss, I will be missing and uh, the third one will have the class on 26 if I'm not wrong. So. So here the brush is a little bit too big, so you see this point here, I took off the color, so I'm going to fix it, I go with the opaque color, I let it dry and then I could, I could come back. And try to have the same 
the same brushes for the bl the blending only or for the face so always uh, I put away some brushes that I use only for the faces and a different set of brushes that I use for you know the same one but that I use only for the for the garments it's really important mostly to have uh, quite new or not so much used brushes for being able to do a blending to be, uh, do a good blending Okay, so we'll, we'll stop at this point and um, if you have some questions that are connected to this step, please let me know and if not, you'll have some time to, to think about some questions. In the meantime, I will, I will think about the, the question of Amy regarding the expression and I will come with examples so and I will repeat the message from the beginning I just want to be sure that everyone uh, will, uh, will understand will hear it so it was about the about the, the videos and the fact that uh, I counted like four or five videos with uh, three hour each. The idea was that I was adding one hour plus, so it was two hour plus one. Uh, and the extra one hour every Friday, five Fridays ago, it was to cover a little bit, to cover the, the period that I was missing. So the two Fridays from the two, two next Fridays that I will be away. So like this, I, I covered that, that period, so you'll have, anyway, you have some, some videos to, to watch. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see each other on 26, if I'm not mistaken, so the first Friday after 22 July. In the meantime, I wish you a good, good work and a blessed weekend. And um, with some of you, I will we'll see next week and the, the other week after. Okay, thank you very much for watching and uh, have a blessed week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.